Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 17 of season 4 of the F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the Japanese Grand Prix. Of course, if you missed out on yesterday's video where we went to the Temple of Speed and the Monza Circuit, I would highly recommend going back and checking out. Quite a dramatic race from the Italian venue and yeah, the championship fight continues to heat up between myself and Max Verstappen and their championship nine points in it as we head into the Japanese Grand Prix 18 points in the Constructors Championship as well Red Bull really seem to have found a run of form once again recently notably uh, Yuki Tsunoda slowly but surely actually bringing himself closer and closer towards the championship battle once again but there is some huge news as we head into the Japanese Grand Prix if we head over to the driver market Max Verstappen is going to be retiring at the end of the season there. Crazy, crazy news. Valtteri Bottas has also confirmed that he will be retiring as well at the end of the campaign there. So the Dutchman may be trying to do what Sergio Perez did last year. Announce his retirement from the sport and try to go out with a bang there. So yeah, Verstappen is going to be retiring come the end of season four. We just want to make sure that we claim this world championship. Don't let that get in our head and try to walk away a champion. Japanese Grand Prix time though, Yuki Tsunoda's home race, I'm sure he'd love another win. But immediately diving in then with qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix and how many races this season are we going to get in these horrible changeable conditions there? Going to try and get a run on Lance Stroll out of the final corner in his Haas car but clearly that Haas very very slippery down the straight so I really hope we haven't instantly tripped each other over and I've got to be very very careful of that as well around this circuit. The AI like to do very, very peculiar things as Stroll actually collides with me on the exit of the corner as well then. But, yeah, hopefully these changeable conditions are going to suit our driving style, are going to suit um, the setup as well on the car. Running a uh, quite very, very high downfall setup here, pretty much maxed out on the wings. It seems to work around quite a lot of the tracks uh, late on in the season. Qatar is another example of a track that you'd never guess... Uh, with its fairly long front straight that it would work around Qatar, but it really does, apparently. Um, but, yeah, track potentially meant to be drying up by the end of the session, but would not surprise me if we end up in a similar scenario uh, to what we did last weekend at Monza, where it doesn't really ever properly dry up either. So we'll wait and see as to what happens throughout qualifying, but hopefully, of course, we can just make it through on the one run there. It's taking some time at Dennis Hauger as well as through spoon we go not really too sure what the benchmark is uh, that we've got to be aiming for here actually as we make our way down in towards the final couple of quarters either way we're three seconds up on jack doing there in the alpha tarry so this should hopefully uh, see us right towards the front of the field there as we round our way through the final couple of corners dennis hauger just getting in the way he's going to be out in q1 i mean look at the grip we've got on the uh Danish driver, isn't he? No, Norwegian, sorry. But we do go fastest anyway, and that'll be us into Q2. We're heading out then into Q2 very late on in the session, but the track is starting to reach the crossover period here. So we're actually going to do an outlap, try and get my eye in, and then we're going to try and gamble it on a set of the dry compound of tyres here. Just see if we can make it through. The Delta reckoned that we were about seven seconds away, but it was coming down rather rapidly. So I'm hoping by the end of the session we might have seen a transfer over. It's a bit bold, it's a bit brave, but will it be beautiful? There's still a lot of spray being kicked up at the moment, but the grip is definitely getting there on this set of the dry compound tyres. You can see 130R is completely flat, and that does give me a bit of confidence then that we are going to have enough residual grip in the circuit there as rounding our way through the final couple of corners. What we've got to remember is this track is going to continue to get faster and faster, especially as everyone else is still pu pushing water off of the dry line. But this is a gamble. We're going to have to sweat this one and just see what we can muster up.
heading out a spoon. I'm not looking confident at the moment. We've dropped a little bit of time around the lap, and you can see there, yeah, two seconds away from Kevin Magnussen. We'd only dropped a couple of tenths in sector one, but we're going to have to send it through the final chicane, but I don't think we're going to get there. I think we might be out in Q2 for the Japanese Grand Prix. We took a gamble on the tyres. Yep, it's over. I mean, we weren't going to get there anyway, but that has been a nightmare. Not what we needed here in Japan. And we are starting this one from P16. And there we go. Have a look at our final times there. Pierre Gasly uh, just behind Max Verstappen at the front of the field. But, yeah, we were definitely losing a lot of time there right towards the end of the session. Like I said, we were only three tenths away in Sector 1. So I really thought the track was going to come to us there. But Sector 2 and Sector 3 getting worse and worse as it went on. We line up. We're probably going to take some engine penalties, to be honest. Get some more in the pool. So we're probably going to be right at the rear of the field. The beloved Suzuka had a couple of unplanned years away from the calendar, but it's now back where it belongs, at the heart of the Formula One season. Welcome along to the Japanese Grand Prix. fantastic qualifying session it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race Felipe Drogovic lines up on pole position and it's Pierre Gasly in P2 considering the rest of the grid we have Sainz, Leclerc, Sonoda, Verstappen, Oscar Piastri, Fittipaldi, Ocon, Albon, De Vries, Magnussen, Russell, Liam Lawson, Theo Porsche, Mr. Monaco, Dewan, Halga, Sergeant, Bottas, Joe, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Right, well, here we are then, trackside for the Japanese Grand Prix. We've been a little bit lucky. Verstappen seemed to have had a bit of a nightmare in qualifying as well, lining up down in P6. But I said Monza last weekend was going to be damage limitation. This is really, really going to have to be damage limitation today. We're lining up 10 places behind our championship rival. And Suzuka is not an easy track to overtake on. We've got to be calm but aggressive, cautious but brave. This is going to get scary here. Well, metaphors out of the way then. Let's get ready for the Japanese Grand Prix. Five red lights. Mighty long hole, but it is lights out. And away we go. And we need to try and get a good start here as we head down in towards some. We're going to get boxed in slightly uh, between Lawson oy, and the Haas of Teo Porchetta. He's going to instantly try and swipe in front of me there. We do get a warning for a collision with Teo. I thought he was whoa, going to back out of it. It's how slow are the AI going? through these first couple of corners there. It's like Noah's Ark, two by two, to make our way through the S's. Russell getting a big slide on through the next couple of corners as, whoa, Liam Lawson there trying to trying to take me out, apparently. If you want to take me out, mate, take me out to dinner instead. But anyway, we're rounding our way through the degners. Then again, Lawson trying to stick his nose up. Uh, again, take me out to dinner first, my friend. But yeah, making our way though down in towards the hairpin. Surely now we can try and get a couple of spots, which we will do down the inside of both Russell and Alex Albon. Yellow flags out for the Constantina in at the rear of the field there. But Drogovic, mega qualifying by him to take pole position here. Absolutely love to see that after a couple of rough races for our new Brazilian teammate. Can he do the business today? That's the real question. Could be very, very useful for us in stopping Max taking some points out here. As it looks like one of the Red Bulls has lost a place early on. As here comes Alex Albon. We know how rapid that Alpine can be in a straight line. Apparently, Alex Albon, though, not feeling brave on lap one. Did not fancy his chances down the inside there. I think he probably would have made it through rather easily, to be honest. But Drogovic leads then at the end of lap one. Got to try and stretch his legs ahead of the Ferrari, I'm guessing, of Charles Leclerc. But, yeah, we've made four places up, though, so we cannot complain. 
Sector 1, though, that I've set this car up for and hopes it really is going to come alive. There's a look at that right around the outside of Kevin Magnussen. You never see moves through there, but this is why you've got to try and gamble it with the setup sometime. You know, you've got to be able to overtake, capitalise where you can, and especially with how odd the AI are down the straights around this venue, you've, you've got to be able to try and utilise those advantages wherever possible. There's all Nick DeFries. Well, oh, Nick DeFries there, very, very hesitant through the hairpin. I know I get a lot of questions by people asking why I run such high downforce setups on this game. People seem to think it screws me over. Uh, the AI actually have an unnatural amount of uh, grip, especially when the cars get quite upgraded through the corners. So you kind of have to match them through the twisty bits and then hope, obviously, you lose out very little time down the straights. Uh, it, 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 to be honest, like, the human players run high downforce setups and the AI can anyway, or the AI choose to anyway. Uh, so you kind of have to sort of steer into that meta as down the inside of Nick DeFries will go. If if low downforce setups worked, then I would absolutely be going for them, but they just simply don't on this game. But it already looks like Sonoda is causing a little bit of a train behind him there. Sainz and Verstappen still stuck behind as all Sainz. Sorry, it's Leclerc even. Uh, so it's Sainz actually applying pressure to Felipe at the front of the field there as we'll take another one. Beautiful little diving manoeuvre there to the inside of Esteban Ocon. But yeah, Yuki struggling early on here, but instantly, though, we've almost caught up to the back of the Stappen. That's going to make life potentially even easier. Fittipaldi there, a little bit of a wobble off the corner. We're going to have to drain loads of battery, though, down in towards the final couple of turns. You can see how much time the McLaren gains. Still, we'll never understand why the area had to blend the throttle through there, but down the inside of yet another McLaren at the Casio Triangle, and that's going to be another move completed. Next up, our championship rival. One round the outside, round the outside. No, not quite that time round. The Red Bull, much quicker car through the corners than basically anything else on this circuit. But yeah, Yuki is really holding us all up. Actually, quite a treat early on here. And I'm sure Verstappen is already questioning how on earth I'm in his mirrors. Similar to Belgium, of course, where he was past me uh, by the end of lap one, despite starting so many places lower. As there we go, that's a move. The states are intent there. Down the inside of Verstappen will go. Has to jump out of the way at the last second there, and we are now ahead of Maxi Boy in this Grand Prix there. Absolutely critical move at this early stage, and yeah, it really does show, you know, after the summer break, we mean business here against Max. Yet to beat me, actually, since the end of the summer break at his home race, and then at a track that really should have suited his car as Leclerc. I never moved down the inside of Yuki, not able to make it happen, so we're going to try and get down the inside of Charles there. Or do we switch it? Do we switch it? No, we'll sit back for now. It's so all getting a little bit aggressive early on here. So we'll try and get the power down around the outside of the final corner. This is not really where I want to be as we head back down in towards turn one. But we are going to be able to drag race with Charles. Let's see how quick that Ferrari car is, though. Down the straights, as I'm so worried about where he's going to lift. We'll take the warning. I don't care. As wheel banging with Charles Leclerc. This is really feisty stuff early on. And the Dutch, uh, sorry, the Monogas driver even forced to back out of it in the end. Can we try and get a run around the outside of Yuki as well? Look at that! Around the outside we'll go, using battery through the S's. Sonoda's going to try and get back at me off the corner, and we're absolutely not having that. And what a mega start to this Grand Prix it's been. We're already up to P5, so 11 places gained in 5 laps here, but a big gap up to Pierre Gasly up the road. We're probably going to have a couple of laps just to work on our own pace. Well, starting lap 9 then, a little bit concerned about our lack of fuel saving so far this afternoon. Of course, the last thing we want is a repeat of Miami. A uh, gap to Gasly, though, is coming down, but not actually that rapidly either. I think we did take a lot out of the tyres early on in the stint, of course, trying to make the impact that we could. So, yeah, gap to Pierre now down to about 3.4 seconds. But I am um and about whether it's worth trying to stretch an undercut. Maybe coming out sort of around Liam Lawson here. Just try and get a couple of laps uh, on the AI. But to be honest, I think our pace is still pretty strong. Don't really want to try and do anything too fancy. What I'm going to do actually at the end of lap 11 is box pit confirm them. We're going to go one lap early on the undercut and just see if we can actually save some fuel as well. Um, but yeah, I think we should come out ahead of the Alpha Towers. We might just get ahead of Liam Lawson as well in this Grand Prix. But it's still, you know, a bit of a gamble early on this afternoon. No, we could get a safety car or a red flag now that could completely screw us and leave us having to do all the hard work once again there. It looks like Charles Leclerc uh, likes my idea 
is is going to copy it. Um, yeah, really hoping we come out in some clear air to make this work. As we head, obviously, down to pit lane exit. Here comes Liam Lawson, though. Are we going to be out ahead of the Williams? No, we're not. But we are going to be a little way behind him. So not the end of the world. Like I said, the much bigger concern was those Alpha Tauris. Uh, but we didn't even really save any fuel going through pit lane. So we are going to have to focus on that in the second half. As yellow flags, Mercedes, George Russell having a bit of a nightmare. That's going to cost us all a little bit as we'll get around the outside of Liam. Uh, yeah, George must have just gone for a little cheeky pirouette there. Maybe trying to throw me off. And yeah, I did get a little bit nervous for a second that we get a safety car from that. Because uh, that would have been very much us in big, big trouble. But can we try and get a run on the Mercedes? Not quite close enough just yet. We know how good that Merc can be off the corners. But fresh tyres versus very worn, out me uh, very worn out softs. Should be able to go around the outside. No, not quite there. Russell, look at that. Getting his elbows out. Clearly on Team Max Verstappen at the moment. But... Yeah, rounded our way through Spoon then. Surely... Oh, come on, George. Stop sliding. Every time I seem to have seen George Russell of these, either sliding or spinning in this Grand Prix. He's really not having a fun time of it so far as... Is he going to blend? Probably. Yep, there you go. There's that blender throttle that we're worried about. Two more cars from the front runners into the pit lane. Uh, but yeah, we've really not been able to undercut in the way I would have wanted that. As Verstappen is going to be in onto a set of the mediums. So we're still going to be a long way ahead of him. Uh, Sainz and Piastri there heading back out of pit lane. Uh, we've done all right, actually. We should get Oscar here as we head down in towards one. Round the outside we'll go of Oscar Piastri there. That was a little scary right at the last moment. And now Sainz and I are both going to be trying to jump Drogovic. There we go. Felipe Drogovic into the pit lane then at the end of 13. Half distance in the Japanese Grand Prix. And I'm looking confident at the moment. We want purple sector one, green through sector two. And surely we're going to get the DRS on Carlos Sainz as well, so we might be able to give that Ferrari a run down the start finish straight there nicely on the throttle out of the final corner. We're also able to save a little bit of fuel at the moment. It's new fastest lap of the day, and here we go then. Is this going to be a move for the lead? Yes, it is. Drogovic has even been jumped by Pierre Gasly there as down the inside of Carlos Sainz will go. Temporarily, we were three wide for the lead there as Gasly came out of the pit lane, but we are through and to the front of the field. Now we just need to build up a little bit of a gap. And then we can focus on saving this fuel. But 16th to 1st in 14 laps here. We are absolutely flying in Japan. 10 laps to go then off the Grand Prix. And I just cannot shake Carlos Sainz at this stage of the afternoon. There, We're still saving a tiny bit of fuel each and every lap. We are pretty much on track to save what we need to. You can see a lot of lifting and coasting. But yeah, I just cannot get him out of the one second zone at the right places. We've got yellows out. One of the Haas cars going slowly. Safety car now could be rather interesting. Help us save some fuel towards the end of the afternoon. It looks like they've been able to get going again. Oh no, Carlos Sainz after last weekend's engine failure at Monza. The team have just come over the radio telling me he's got mechanical issues here. Carlos Sainz dropping instantly four seconds back. In this Grand Prix there, Drogovic has been given a lifeline as well to potentially move back up into P2. But when will that Ferrari driver get any luck in this championship? I mean, it's given me a huge window to try and break free. We're just nine laps to go of the Grand Prix there. I'm trying to work out whether it's Verstappen. Oh, it must be, yeah. Verstappen surely is up to sixth place in this Grand Prix. But Sainz dropping back so aggressively. All of a sudden, never quite seen anything like that. In F1 23, maybe he's going to have to dive into the pit lane at the end of this lap here. But a 1-2 for us. Could be our first one since La Castellet. But now we've got a good chance to save some points there. Yep, there we go. Sainz dives into the pit lane. Okay, Drogic has got his work cut out. But six, we now can hopefully afford to relax a bit. What's happened to Felipe now? He's suddenly dropped back down to P4 in this race. Gasly now up into P2 then. As I think Piastri and Drogovic starting to duke it out. A lot towards the end of this one. We just need the points over Red Bull. That's the big thing that we're worried about. And I don't want Verstappen finishing fourth. Yellow's out, though. Is that full yellows? No, not quite. Yellow flag seems to be a little bit broken here. As I think Carlos Sainz now grinding to a halt in this race. So whatever mechanical issues he's had have become a whole lot worse for Ferrari there. Carlos Sainz out of the Japanese Grand Prix. And 
I think we're... Yeah, I wouldn't mind a safety car still at this point, but I'm also quite happy just controlling this. Got well, five laps to go then. We're basically back to neutral fuel, but Gasly, I think he's still sensing an opportunity in that Mercedes to try and get a second win in just three Grand Prix. Just starting to close down that gap a little bit more and more, but yeah, now we should be able to push a little bit more towards the end of this one as Drogovic again will complete the move on Oscar Piastri down at Turn 1. I'd love to just see Drogovic back on the podium. He needs this after the couple of races he's had. Oh, <laughs> no. Well, let's hope that's not going to cost us anything right at the end of this race. Three laps to go here from Japan. Yeah, the gap to Gasly, five seconds. So I don't think we should be too concerned. Just nicked it outside the white line there. And that's going to be a penalty. I am not going to worry about that mark late on in the day. I was going to say the sky looking a little bit overclassed. But, uh, overclassed? Overcast? Uh, but yeah, rain was never meant to be a threat here in Japan. So hopefully not going to see anything happen right towards the very end. I am getting more and more concerned though uh, with the rate and knots that Verstappen is close up to Piastri and Drogovic. Please can we walk away with Verstappen not on the podium? Oh, oh no, Piastri! Piastri with issues late on in the day there, and Verstappen now is going to inherit P4 then, and Oscar Piastri so late in the afternoon. He's done a fantastic drive, was in contention for a podium right towards the very end, but he's going to pull over. Looks to be the same spot that Michael Schumacher did all those years ago. Our second DNF of the day there. It's going to promote Leclerc back into P5 here late on. But Verstappen, you know, we have been absolutely rapid today. Verstappen, I kind of feel has, you know, been gifted some of the places that he's had later on in the afternoon. I guess we got put under a lot less pressure uh, by virtue of Carlos Sainz's mechanical issues. And I'll have we picked up that penalty. Things might have been very, very different towards the end of this one. But on to the final lap we go then. Mark just telling me to keep up the concentration and get this thing to the flag. What a race it's been here from Japan. A nightmare in Saturday's qualifying session. They took a gamble on the wrong set of tyres and it did not pay off for me. But we knew today we were going to have some good pace. We knew we had to attack early on, utilise that first set of tyres as best as possible and then try to go for a little bit of a cheeky undercut on the rest of the field here. And, well, it's not quite Kimi Raikkonen 17th the first. But 16th to 1st is not a bad showing either. Still, though, nervous uh, that we're going to get an engine failure at some point between now and the end of the season. But, yeah, this track's honestly been a bit of a bogey track for me on this game as well. So, fine. I've always felt like we've had good pace here. Just have not been able to walk away with the result I feel like we deserve. But today, of all days, when we couldn't have asked for it any more, Japan has absolutely delivered there. A little bit wide on the exit of Spoon, but in towards the final five corners then of the Japanese Grand Prix. For the first time ever in F123, we are going to lead a world championship here, and this could not have come at a much better time for us. In towards the Casio Triangle for the final time, a hammer blow for Max Verstappen, who loses the lead at the top that he's held on to since round two. We are back on top. So sore. Oh, superb driving. That is the race win, my friend. Well done. They've done it then, here at Suzuka. A brilliant win on the beloved figure of eight circuit. Tell me, Ant. How do they manage to achieve this win? I think we'll chalk this one up to a deft touch on the brake pedal. That's allowed them to challenge down the inside into the braking zones, and ultimately, if you do that often enough, you end up winning the race. It was great to watch as well though, wasn't it? Forget strategy, forget tyre management. Who doesn't love a good old-fashioned scrap? Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there, and it's great to see them make their way onto the podium now.
let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Mr Monaco takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? I have to give it to Mr Monaco. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. The owner-driver's team moved to the top of the table. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport action. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, there we are then, the end of the Japanese Grand Prix, and look at that, 16th to 1st, even the penalty uh, didn't end up costing us all too much there, and I think actually uh, we ran out of fuel towards the line as well, but nothing was going to stop me here today in Japan. Gasly comes through for P2 ahead of Drogovic and Max Verstappen there, Charles Leclerc beats out Fittipaldi. McLaren are really coming on strong towards the end of the campaign here. Sonoda to freeze Ocon and Kevin Magnussen will round out our top 10. And that means, yep, get a picture. For the first time ever, we lead the World Championship inside F123. Five points the gap now ahead of Verstappen as we head into the final few races there. You can see Charles Leclerc still in P5 there, but yeah, Drogovic uh, up to P12, building up a bit of a gap ahead of Kevin Magnussen, but I still want to see him fighting for that fifth place by the end of the year. Constructors-wise, up to 41 points once again. You'll love to see it as well. At the top of the table, Ferrari an 18-point lead over Mercedes. They're on one point between Alpine and Aston Martin there. And yeah, McLaren, I mean, they probably are still... I mean, they're almost guaranteed to still finish seventh by the end of the year there. But will we see either of those four backmarker teams score? Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and we'll be back tomorrow when Formula 1 returns to Qatar one of the best races on the calendar. You guys do not want to miss that. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters that you can see currently on your screens. If you want to join them from as little as £1 a month, it would be massively appreciated and you help support my work. You also get access to weekly updates from myself with everything going on behind the scenes with the channel. But yeah, a massive thank you to the names you see on your screen and we'll be back very soon with a brand new video.